How you doing guys? What a cool old barn. It was uh, built in 1898 according to the owner, Edward Westermeyer. And uh, I came past here the other day and I was really surprised to see uh, a shot that if I, I had not come by here at, after dark, I never would have seen this. I would have blown right past it. But there are Christmas lights strung on this barn that you can't quite see now. But uh, they were illuminated when I came by here. So I thought what would make a nice shot is to come by this barn after a snowfall when the lights are on. And uh, like during the blue hour, we have a clear night tonight. So the sky's gonna be nice and blue. We'll get a nice blue color in the sky. As it gets darker, those lights will become more illuminated. And it's just a barn with great character. So. That's what we're here to shoot today. Now it's a matter of just choosing what the right focal length is for this. I'm not sure. I don't, I'm not sure if I'll use a 70 to 200 lens and kind of zoom in on it, or if I'll get up a little bit closer with a 24 to 105 or, I don't think a 16 to 35 is, is the call here, but I also brought a 50 millimeter prime lens. That's a 1.2 f-stop 1.2 so uh, I may try that as well but I figured I wanted to get out here early so that you can see what I'm doing uh, before that sun goes down and uh, it's gonna set behind the barn across the way there in just another couple of minutes so we're gonna be losing the light pretty quickly here so all right that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna try to set up uh, I'll start with a uh, 70 to 200 and see where we go from there you know I always ask permission before I step on anybody's property, ask to shoot their barn or wherever it happens to be. And so I came by earlier today and I met the gentleman who lives here, Edward Westermeyer, and uh, he was a little leery, a little standoffish at first, but uh, we got to chatting and he kind of warmed up to the idea. And next thing you know, I'm out here now. He just came out, uh, he's putting his chickens to bed there says he's got a fox running around here, so he likes to keep them cooped up pretty tight at night. Don't blame him. It's a uh, fox's favorite snack, chicken. So mine too, for that matter. Anyway, he came out here yakking it up. I, I hated to tell him that I'm, I'm kind of in a hurry because I'm losing the light. But he's telling me about trails that go back here and he's got 80 acres and I'm welcome back here anytime. And that's what I love about doing this behind the door project. I get to meet some of the most interesting and nicest people and when they find out what the project is and what I'm doing they're they're all for it they're very proud of their of their heritage up here and of their property and so uh, I always get permission and you should always seek permission before you go on private property so all right I got to get set up no more chatting Kevin get on with it I think this 70 millimeters is going to be the shot. So really just want to focus in on the barn and the lights. I 
It's nice. I mean, it's a nice subject. I'll show you what I got going here for a uh, composition. Of course, when I put this camera into movie mode, we lose about 30% of the uh, of the field of view, as opposed to when I'm just taking a photo. But uh, uh, maybe if I move the camera back, let's try that. So that's essentially the shot I have right there. Uh, maybe just a little bit more roof line. And it's now just a matter of waiting for the sky to get dark. We're pointing due north here, actually a little bit northeast, and there's nothing really going on in the sky, which is fine. I don't need any sky in the shot here. The whole frame is going to be taken up by the barn and by this arc of Christmas lights that come to a peak right above those center doors in the barn. That's our shot. Make sure everything is leveled here. I don't think this barn is quite level. That's all right. Just framing it up now. I'm, I'm going for a 16 by nine frame, uh, but I think I can crop this in at something other than that. I want to get rid of those footprints in the snow there. You notice I don't use a ball head. I'm not a big fan of ball heads. Those grid lines come in nice for centering that doorway. Disable the touch screen. Zoom in. Expand my focus here. Grids on the windows. Maybe even the lights there. Make sure that I'm completely in focus. Set it to manual focus. Set on auto, it's shooting 180th of a second, f4.5, which is fine. I have everything on a single plane here, so I don't need much in the way of depth of field. And ISO 400. That'll change as it gets darker. So on auto, it's shooting at uh, 180th of a second, f4, ISO 500. So it keeps changing minute to minute here as we lose light in the sky. So, yeah, just going to wait for that blue hour. Shooting at about 90 mil. That should do it. A relatively easy setup. Very simple, straightforward shot. No filters, nothing. We're just going to... Uh, probably bracket our shots because I think at some point those lights are going to uh, glow too much and hopefully they will reflect off the snow as well. The moon is out. Where is it? Just there. So we'll get some nice moonlight on the snow too. We'll wait for it to get dark. Probably won't be completely dark for about another hour. So lovely old barn. So it is.
I forgot I had this in there. I went out last night, about nine o'clock last night, down to uh, the canal again. There was a, a boat coming in, the John Boland, and uh, I thought it was going to be coming in the canal. I get down to the canal and it sailed right on by. So uh, that was a wasted trip. That's what happens sometimes. But Colleen made me a thermos of tea. So that's uh, almost 24 hours ago. And it's still pretty warm. So I'll take it. Beautiful night out here tonight. It's so absolutely quiet and still. I love being out here by myself when it's quiet like this. Those are my favorite times. For sure. Nice old farmhouse across the way there now, too. Catching some nice light behind it with the sunset. Gonna get a nice moon glow on the front of this barn. That'll help. So what I'm going to end up having to do here, oh, not having to do, I guess what I prefer to do, is I'm going to set it to manual mode and uh, dial in the aperture and the ISO. I want to keep nice and low. On auto now, it's 12,800 or something, which is ridiculous. There would be way too much noise in that. So, yeah, I'll set it something reasonable. ISO 400 or so, and try to work around that. This is only an f/4 lens, so because I'm at uh, 90 millimeters, I may have to switch to that 50 mm prime lens, which is a 1.2, and then recompose my shot. I'll have to get in closer because it's only 50 millimeters, not 90. But we'll start with this. See where, see where it goes. I noticed in the video that they're starting to flicker. That's because they're LED lights. And so they emit light at a different frequency than what the camera does. This camera's rolling at 25 frames per second. So I can shoot this here now at F8, which is the sweet spot for this lens. ISO 200, and it'll take a two and a half second exposure. So I'm going to set my two-second timer so I don't have any vibration. All right. We take a look now through the LCD screen. You see that if I drop that to two stops underexposed, it's going to shoot it at 3.2 seconds, ISO 200. We'll wait a bit longer. Yeah, I don't know if you can hear that or not. I switched the microphone back to the stereo mic instead of the lavalier because I heard some coyotes out in the field behind here and I was hoping maybe you'd be able to hear them too. You gotta love how still and quiet it is out here. Stunning, just stunning. Man. Yeah, you probably can't see me real well here. The sun has long since set. It's really beginning to get quite dark and uh, getting some nice glow off of the uh, off the snow now from those lights and it won't be long before that moon really starts to uh, illuminate the snow and that's going to help us out as well so yeah the uh, canon m50 is useless in the dark and i don't know how much better this osmo action is but we'll see i'm also going to try the 50 millimeter lens i think i'm still sticking with the uh, 70 to 200 but i change up my composition a little bit you'll see those results soon all right.
So, this is that test shot image that I just showed you, taken with the Canon 70-200 to f4 lens. As you can see, it wasn't quite dark enough out yet to create a glow from the lights on the snow, or to get any reflection from the moon, which was about three quarters full and off my right shoulder here. But I was happy with the overall composition in a 6x9 crop. I left myself enough room though for a possible 2x3 crop if I thought that might look better. Always good to leave yourself some options. But you know, after looking at this 2x3 I decided I'm uh, not happy with the broad band of white at the top and the bottom with the snow so inconsistent on the roof at the right and the mess of footprints from the property owner running across the foreground down below. I didn't like the symmetry and, well, the shot is all about a symmetry. But I did notice a potential exposure issue here and that has to do with the windows and the door, for that matter. As the evening grew darker, I knew it would leave those internal spaces of the barn black and void. Lifeless, really. Fortunately, I brought along my low-level landscaping light kit. I often use these in nightscape astrophotography to illuminate objects in the foreground. What I like about these lights are they're compact and lightweight and rechargeable. Each panel contains 96 dimmable LED lights. I throw on a diffuser and a half-orange gel to simulate daylight, or in this case, incandescent light. Otherwise, the LED lights themselves are just too blue. I prop the light panels up on the windowsills on the opposite side of the barn, and I turn down their intensity about 40% or so, just to lightly illuminate the interior. The difference proved to be very dramatic changing the composition from, well, what I think is rather dull and ordinary, into one that draws the curiosity of the viewer into the scene. At least it did for me. The fact that you can't make out anything in the interior, really, only intensifies that curiosity. And it allows the viewer to create their own story as to what might be going on inside the barn. It's much like the work of Todd Heido's Homes at Night from the Outside photo series, if you're familiar with that. He depicts isolated suburban homes at night, windows glowing with no discernible details of the interior visible. So the viewer is left on the outside looking in, and it creates a sense of mystery and secrecy and a bit of uneasiness as well. I think this is amplified here by the atmosphere that's created by the glowing string of Christmas lights that bounce off the snow that's illuminated by an unseen moon and with the hint of footprints leading up to the unsecured door. Makes me wonder, do I go in? I put a link to Todd Heido's series below for reference. His work is really remarkable and worth checking out. I'm pleased with the results of this photo, as I am any time, I guess, that an image turns out how I had originally envisioned it. Toward the end of the evening, I stumbled upon another composition, using my 50 millimeter portrait lens. It didn't turn out as well as I expected, but it definitely sparked an idea. And it has me eager to return here next month, under similar conditions, with the moon out, and the ground covered with snow. I want to capture a vertical panorama and include a significant portion of the night sky. Although this is facing northeast and there isn't a lot happening in that area of the sky this time of year, I think that by adding a star glow filter to enhance the light and the color of the largest stars will provide some intrigue and a different story to tell. Well, that does it for me. I hope you enjoyed this week's episode of Behind the Door. If you found the content useful, or if it's something that's of interest to you, please hit the like button below. That's the best thing you can do to help me grow the channel. 
and consider subscribing if you haven't done so already. And if you like the content and would like to be notified by email whenever I post a new episode, usually about once a week, smash that notification button down there as well. Thanks for watching, everyone. And until next time, stay safe, and we'll see you down the road.